good to be here. Uh, flew in from New York, staying uh, right in the heart of um, West Hollywood. Great neighborhood. The Gay Pride Parade actually goes right by my house every day. And uh, I like a gay area. You know what's got to be nice about being gay is uh, you don't have to wonder every other day if you're gay. <laughs> I'm just done with it. I like dudes. I'm going to work, you know? You can... <laughs> You can just enjoy a pool party. You don't have to be confused. <laughs> I, know, I look at gay men the same way I look at marijuana. You know, when I was younger, I was like, ah, oh, not for me. But now that it's more accepted, I'm like, eh, I'll dabble. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know, I'm a weird guy. Outside of this, I don't really like attention. That's why I never order fajitas. <laughs> it's too much, you know? Just trying to mind your own business. Some guy comes in, tss, like, can't you finish cooking that before you leave the kitchen? Man. Ordering fajitas is like hanging out with your friend that vapes too much. You're like, dude, I'm glad you're here, but come on, it's embarrassing. You know? Yeah. Uh, they should have a way for guys like me to order them. Like, I'll take the chicken fajitas introvert style. <laughs> guys like, all right, chicken fajitas, hold the spectacle. Got it. Um, you guys, uh, I'm a little hungover, not gonna lie to you. I gotta cut back on the drinking. I drink too much. Sad, I've actually lost a lot of friends to sobriety and uh, yeah alcohol is really the only vice where when someone quits you get annoyed you know you know if your friend's like i'm gonna quit doing crack you're never like but what about the wedding uh, i don't know i feel like if i'm addicted to any drug my drug of choice is being late I know, I know you can't smoke it. I know you can't snort it. But being late's a drug. It's like an amphetamine. It's like a stimulant. Think about it. If you'd be at work at 9 and you wake up at 9.30, whoo, you're up. <laughs> Holy hell, you look like a drug addict. Your eyes are popped. You're sweating. You're dry work. I'm super late. I'm super late. I'm super late. I'm super late. Yeah, you get to work. It's like you're coked up. You're talking about, I'm so sorry. I hate myself. I'm gay. I love you. Ah! <laughs> oh, man. That's bad. I've lost jobs, relationships, friends hate me now, you know, and I don't know, every time I'm late, it's like I've done a drug. I'm like, I'll never do that again. I feel like hell of a horrible person. And then a week later, whoo, I'm late all over again. <laughs> I'm back off the wagon. And it's actually worse than a drug, because it's free, it's legal, and there's no cure for it, you know? <laughs> Even if your friends and family get together, like, Mark's always late, we gotta have an intervention. By the time I show up, they're gone. <laughs> yeah. You know what's a sneaky drug is caffeine. We're all addicted. It's the one drug you're allowed to be an addict. No one cares. It's completely accepted. You wake up. It's the first thing you want. You go in your kitchen, turn your coffee maker. You're making drugs at home. Yeah? <laughs> There's an appliance for it. There's no Mr. Meth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you look like an addict. You open a drawer, pull out a bag. Colombian. <laughs> ah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, then you get to work, everybody's cracked out. I can't function without my coffee. I'm not myself without my coffee. No coffee, no worky, yeah? <laughs> I used to work at this office. This mean lady would come in every day. She'd be like, I'm not talking to anybody till I get a cup of coffee. And I was always like, great, hide the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I was at a coffee shop earlier. Man, so many beautiful women in this city. My God, it, it's got to be hard to be a lady because you're constantly judged by your looks. Like a friend of mine, she's a cocktail waitress. She got fired for gaining weight. Fired her for gaining weight. And yet I see overweight police every day. <laughs> Shouldn't that be thin? I don't care what you do with your body, but they're protecting us. It's like a safety issue, you know? <laughs> she's bringing chicken wings to a table. I mean, she might eat one. <laughs> <laughs> These are police. I went to Europe once. The cops didn't have guns. They don't need them. They can chase people, tackle them. They're fit. We need guns in America. We're lazy. Just, I'm not running. Right? <laughs> I got a new rule. Cop gains too much weight. No more car. Bicycle. Gained even more weight, no more gun, sword. You gotta get in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's gotta be intimidating to be a lady, you know? Like, my ex-girlfriend, very paranoid. She always said I was cheating on her. She always, like, go through my cell phone, look through my sock drawer, sniff me. Always looking for clues. That's why I'm surprised you don't see more female detectives. <laughs> Women would be amazing at that. You guys are intuitive, you're curious, you're persistent. I feel like you ladies would crack every case as long as you thought it was personal. <laughs> That's the key. Like, man, this guy killed 18 people in Fresno. So what? Well, he's also cheating on his wife. Give me the file. <laughs> All right, hey. Thanks a lot. I'm Kevin Hart.
September 28th and 29th at the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. We'll be right back, everybody. That was great. That was really great. That was